Hey everybody, Techie 101 here. I know this review's out a day late, I apologize for that wholeheartedly. But uh, anyway, this is the first review of 2013, so let's get to it. And you know, let me just tell you right now though, that uh, this year we're just going by the book. And you know, I know everyone loves my comedy style bleach reviews, and that's still going to be the thing. But we're not dicking around anymore with like alternate personalities or, you know, comic relief characters, because that worked so well last year. No, we're just going to stay right to the topic at hand here with absolutely no deviations whatsoever. Why do I even try? <sighs> okay, come on, let's go. What's your name and your shtick? Let's just get it out of the way first. Okay, so clearly you failed cameo school. Uh, why are you here? How about that? Was that a five? Five what? Hey, wait, 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 wait where are you going? What, what? Okay, that was massively confusing on a couple of levels, but, um... You know, screw it, he's gone. Okay, so chapter starts off with Ichigo and Renji building the most manly of snowmen that have ever existed on the face of this planet. Okay, so from last chapter, we have a bunch of shadowy figures approaching Ichigo and Renji in the pit of the Ho'odin. A lot of people were wondering, uh, and they were actually questioning why I didn't bring up the fact in the last review, like a month ago, of uh, why I didn't consider the possibility of that being uh, Zongetsu and Zabimaru as kind of like a manifested form, and they're going to fight their previous masters. And the reason I didn't see that was simply because, number one, there were several beings down there, not just two. And the other thing is, I, I feel that, I really do feel that if Kubo wanted a Zongetsu versus Ichigo, Zabimaru versus Renji kind of tag battle, he would have shown that off in the last chapter. He wouldn't have shown them as shadowy figures. He would have shown them right away because that would have been such an impact. The only reason he would not show who the enemy was if he was trying to guess, you know, like, like they're a new enemy that we haven't seen yet. And kind of true, we haven't seen these before, but we kind of have. So uh, anyway... Mimaya states that these are actually Asushi, or Asasuchi, I'll probably switch back between the two, and they resemble these uh, faceless, they, they kind of resemble, if you ever saw what uh, Ukiora looked like but when he was a Basto Lorde before he became a wrong car, kind of look like what Ukiora did back then. They're just pure white beings that have like uh, clouds around their eyes that I guess represent tears because uh, Nimaya does say in this chapter that they're like, really pissed off at Ichigo and Renji and they're like depressed in a way, so I guess that that would make sense. And all they have is their eyes and they're just their amorphous beings. And uh, Asuchi, and the reason I said we kind of saw them before is because Asasuchi were always known as like these uh, z basically soulless Zanpakuto or like empty Zanpakuto. Uh, way, way, way back in the Soul Society arc when Ichigo was fighting against Kenpachi and then he goes into his inner world because Kenpachi stabbed him and then we see Zongetsu. Zongetsu gives uh, his sword to the hollow Ichigo and instead he throws a Asasuchi or a shallow hit at Ichigo so he can fight with it. And Ichigo, I think he remarked like, oh, this is like a wooden stick compared to any other Zanpakuto. Uh, so they were kind of like blank Zanpakuto or clean slates, but in this chapter we finally get uh, a, a, like what they actually are, you know, uh, in terms of just like where they play a role into uh, the squads and everything. So they all jump at Ichigo and Renji, try to attack them. We get the title, which is Words of Origin, while we get some Words of Origin about the Asasuchi. Uh, there are over 6,000 Go Team members in the Soul Society, and that includes just regular soldiers, so we finally got a number on that. That's good. And uh, more than anything else, this chapter explains how the Zanpakuto's work, why, where Nimaya plays a role into this. And basically what happens is whenever a Shinigami enters the, uh, the, the, the academy to become a Soul Reaper, uh, I actually saw two interpretations of this. One translation said when they graduate, the other translation said when they enter. I'm going to say when they enter because that just makes more sense. Uh, they receive an Asuchi, which is just a blank Zanpakuto, but it, it has the ability to absorb and kind of collect all the different Ryatsu and emotions and everything of all around a, sh a Shinigami, so they have to keep their Zanpakuto with them at all times, and then eventually, uh, after they, I guess after the Asasuchi collects enough information or data, it becomes, it transforms from a blank slate into whatever Zanpakuto it's going to be. Um, there's a couple of holes in this uh, whole idea, uh, not the least of which being, okay, so that means basically Shinigami creates Zanpakuto. Uh, then again, I mean, creates Zanpakuto spirits. We never really got any idea of where they came from before, but from this chapter, 
from what I'm understanding, a Zanpakuto is just a branch off of the Shinigami's, uh, you know, emotions and Riatsu. It's not their own separate being, but we were always led to be it. It was all own separate being, so... Um, I mean, I guess they could be separate, but they don't come into existence unless the Shinigami pours their information into the into the Asasuchi to begin with. So, I'm probably just overanalyzing it, but that's what I got from this chapter. Mai gives himself credit for being the person that designs the Asasuchi to begin with, and that's where his whole title of being God of the Sword uh, uh, comes from, and that's why he became a member of the Zero Squad for inventing the Asasuchi. So I guess Renji and Ichigo, I mean, they, they don't exactly start fighting these things in the chapter. They just kind of, like, run away from them at first, or they're just defending themselves. It's, it's actually kind of ambiguous. In this one panel, we see Ichigo just running away, so I don't know how that works. Maybe it's, like, a big area down there. Uh, but Ichigo mentions, like, oh, okay, so they're just the manifestations of those Asasuchi. Uh, Nimaya says that, eh, he's close enough in saying that, although it's kind of something else. But that doesn't really matter. What really matters is the fact that those Asasuchi freaking hate Ichigo and Renji right now. Ichigo questions why they exactly hate them. So Nimaya explains it, of course not, you know, logically. He has to do it in kind of like a Riddler, you know, esque way, where he's like, he's like, how do you swing a Zompakto? Swing it, whack, whack, whack. What's whack? It's all whack. Okay, I'm losing you, dude. I, I thought you were a '70s rocker dude at first. Now I just think you're a '70s rocker dude hyped out on some kind of foreign illicit substance. Uh, that would not be a shocker. Just saying. He then brings up all the different ways that a Zanpakuto can be seen from a Shinigami's perspective. Uh, as a friend. Dude, what are you doing? Don't knife them! It's like, around six. See, you're dead. You're dead. Now, now you're dead. I'm not reviving you. No, screw it! No, it was your own dumbass fault. As an acquaintance. <laughs> it's funny, because her name's Catherine. Hello? Oh, hey, Zanpakuto. How you doing? I'm good. Okay. Maybe even a lover or a girlfriend. You are the most amazing Zompok Toe that I have ever met. And I know, you know, we had a lot of, we have our problems in the past. I, I'm sorry for all the shit that happened in high school. But I think it's all better now. And I think we really understand each other. And I would just like to ask you the most serious question of my life. Would you like to be my... Quit dicking around! Ah, no, 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 I wasn't, no, I wasn't doing anything. Well, geez, sorry. Uh, no, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that was just, yeah, that, that was just, you know, comedy sakes. That wasn't really how I actually feel about them. Call me. And he finally ends this with bringing up the ultimate question of who is more superior, Zanpakuto or Shinigami? And it's, and it's time to decide uh, in this fight against Ichigo and Renji who is the more superior being. And I think that's what it comes down to in the very end of the day. That we've always we've always seen Zanpakuto as kind of an equal footing with the Shinigami. You know, you treat the Zanpakuto as your equal, as you know, an extension of yourself. That's what we've always been told. But in this chapter, we're kind of getting like a different sense, like. Maybe it shouldn't be the uh, the Zanpakuto that subjugates the Shinigami. Maybe it should be the Shinigami that subjugates the Zanpakuto. Maybe the Zanpakuto is, in fact, the more in, uh, superior being to the Shinigami. Uh, even though, in the way he just described it, the Shinigami were the ones that created the Zanpakuto spirit. But, uh, even so, maybe they are stronger than the ones, and they are the ones that have to be kind of subjugated. Maybe that's what he means by this. Uh, in, in, in any case... Um, it, it's something certainly interesting that we're going to find out in the next couple of chapters exactly where they're going with this, but that's my idea for it uh, at the moment. Okay, so second half of the chapter, we cut over back to the Soul Society, in, uh, and specifically the Soul Society Underground Central Prison, the bottom floor, Mugen. No, not that, Mugen. The bottom floor of the prison, which, in case you're curious, I checked, and yes, this is the same place that Eisen was sentenced. You know that's going to cause some shit later on. I mean, I mean, the end of this chapter, super epic, but you know... That, that's, that stuff's going to boil down later on, because they're in the same exact freaking place that Aizen is. This giant vault-style door opens, and uh, Kenpachi Zaraki appears, fully healed onto the floor. He states that it's quite impressive that they convinced the Captain Commander to fight down here, uh, and he's actually talking to Unahana, whose face is unseen. Huh. wonder why they're showing off her I'm not showing her face. I mean, we know who she is, right? Uh, he states that this place is also, he states that this place is kind of interesting because, uh, as the name implies, Mugen, it actually stretches on for an infinity. I don't know if it's like a different dimension kind of deal. Um, I'm just assuming that, you know, this place is, uh, just a massive expanse of area, so definitely a, a perfect place to fight or sentence massively homicidal criminals. Uh, sometimes both at the same time. You never know, right? Soul Society politics. 
Unohana brings up the fact that they're here not because they're criminals, to which Kenpachi kind of retorts, and I really like the way he says this. He's like, we're not criminals. <laughs> you got it backwards, sister. If it wasn't for our ability to crack open skulls, you and I'd be nothing more than common criminals. To which Unohana turns around and we get to see her face and ah. Oh my god, it's the darkest part of a man's soul! Ah! Oh, it would appear that in my uh, blind rage, I would have um, apparently committed aggravated assault on somebody. Hmm, I think we're okay as long as there wasn't any kind of deadly weapon. And oh my god, I totally killed somebody. That, that face, I mean, at first when I, when I saw it, when I first read it, I was like, oh, okay, it's, you know, creepy Unohana face because, you know, she's actually the first Kenpachi, and that expression definitely fits her, but going back and just looking at it longer and longer, stare at this picture for like a solid minute, and it, it kind of messes with you, it really does, just, just how you know how Unohana is, and um, I, I actually posted this picture on Facebook the other day, and I said, P put your own caption below it, and some of them were really, were really hilarious. Want to know why my sword is so curved? Bend over and find out. Forget a caption, this shit is the stuff of nightmares. Oh, you just ate the last Twinkie in existence? Don't worry, I'm a doctor. Zaraki, I hope you brought protection, if you know what I mean. And my personal favorite, she will kill you, then heal you, just to kill you again. So yeah, freaking terrifying. Okay, so then she turns around completely and she reveals that the whole reason why her hair was in that massive braid to begin with was because there's actually one scar on her body right underneath her, uh, her neck. And it says it screams Kenpachi's name, so I'm, I, should, I, have to, I, can't stop, I can't keep calling him Kenpachi because uh, there's more than one, so I'm just going to say Zaraki from now on. And apparently it was caused by uh, Zaraki, that's why she got that wound. And Zaraki says something similar where the only wound that he has that's visible over his, his uh, left eye was also caused by Unohana. So that might cause some like reasoning why exactly, um, uh, like, like, like uh, how he thought that Yachiru was the uh, only person he respected. And it also says something really cool about Kenpachi's character because, like, even though Kenpachi's like the 11th Kenpachi down the line and Unohana was the first and Unohana is widely regarded to be the strongest, there's still a, a sense of thing here, like, Kenpachi is honestly probably the strongest Kenpachi next to Unohana or maybe equally on equal footing with Unohana, no matter how many Kenpachis came before them or in between them. So that's, that's pretty interesting there. Uh, we get a little bit of backstory that Unohana was actually a member of the original Goatee with, uh, with Yamamocho, and that's like in the flashback that he gave against uh, Juha Bok, and we saw all those like shaded figures, and I never really thought it was Unohana because of like the hair, and then that's why we couldn't see her. She kind of looked like the chick from the ring, which I was going to make a ring joke in this chapter review, but uh, kind of used up all my ring jokes on uh, As Not, so I got nothing left, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we cut over to Shunsui really quickly in his office. I guess it's his new Captain Commander office or whatever. And he's just going over all the many accomplishments of Unohana. You know, she was just a ma like she just like massacred everybody. She mastered all these thousand styles. And he says though that even though how strong she is, if uh, she decides to clash swords with Kenpachi's Rocky, like if these two were to fight, all balls out, it would end with one of them dying. And the last page of the chapter is Unohana and Kenpachi clashing swords, and as the carnage commences, uh, this chapter was really epic. I have to bring up a little bit of factoid of. I thought the underground prison was destroyed when Juha Bok left, but yeah, that's not really important. I, maybe they fixed it, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, so next chapter, let's see, we have Captain Unohan and Kenpachi. I don't know if they're going to show like every expanse of that fight. Uh, knowing Kubo, we might cut back over to Ichigo fighting Yatsusuchi with Renji, and like the next time we'll see the two, they'll be all bloody and broken and scarred, and there'll be blood everywhere, and maybe one of them will collapse, or maybe uh, maybe something like power will awaken inside of Kenpachi, and Unohan will be like, okay, I finally, you know, you finally are starting to grasp the concept a little bit. Uh, like I said before, I don't know if we're going to get like a Kenpachi Bonkai moment. Uh, Unohana that's a definite possibility, but when it comes to Kenpachi, I don't think we're going to go so far as uh, Bankai. I think he might be able to understand his Zanpakuto a little bit better. He might be able to achieve uh, some kind of Shikai ability uh, or, or better mastery. And the, the fact that this fight is going on uh, in the same chapter where, you know, we're finding out, like, maybe the, the Zanpakuto are more superior than the Shinigami, I don't think that's any coincidence either. I think that's going to play... What we're learning about Zanpakuto from Nimaya and uh, in that little story arc is probably going to be contributing to the whole Kenpachi fight and, you know, they're in his Zanpakuto or something. So that's a good idea there. But uh, if at any rate, uh, that was Chapter 523, everybody. Uh, Techie 101 signing out. See you guys. 2013, we're doing this.